Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Faces and Heels, your podcast for professional wrestling here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and welcome to the recap of WWE's latest premium live event, Backlash France, which took place in, of course, France. And this is WWE's first premium live event to take place after WrestleMania 40. And a lot has taken place since uh, WrestleMania 40 and Backlash. Whereas we've had the draft, we have new champions, we have the announcement for next year's WrestleMania. It's so much has taken place over the last month. Has it been a whole month yet? I don't know. But uh, WWE is hotter than it's ever been right now. I mean, hot, burning hot. And I've I've enjoyed every second of (laughs) WWE programming. Uh, Rather, it's Raw, SmackDown, NXT, uh, even Speed. (laughs) I caught a couple of matches from Speed, and I've enjoyed it. And Backlash, Backlash is a is a pay-per-view historically that I have, uh, I'm not going to say disregarded, but didn't, didn't have too much excitement for in the past, you know, cause I was still getting over WrestleMania and these were pretty much, uh, uh, rematches and stuff like that historically. But this year it's completely different. And quite honestly, it was a different vibe to it. I don't know if it's the post Vince McMahon era that's getting me excited for it or whatever the case may be, but I was excited for this pay-per-view and I can say I was not disappointed. This pay-per-view had five matches, which is a far cry from what we experienced at WrestleMania two nights full of matches (laughs) and we got peppered with just five, but, that's good because these were five excellent matches. We had the bloodline versus Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. We had a triple threat match for the WWE women's championship where Bailey put up her championship that she won at WrestleMania against Naomi and Tiffany Stratton. You also had a singles match for the world heavyweight championship where Damian Priest put up his championship that he won at WrestleMania against main event Jey Uso, as well as a tag team match for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship, where the Kabuki Warriors defended their titles against Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill. And the main event was for the undisputed WWE Championship, where the American Nightmare... Cody Rhodes defended his championship against AJ Styles. Before we break down these matches, I, I got to give a shout out, man. Shout out to France. Leon France, man, and this goes from SmackDown to Backlash. Uh, France brought it. <laughs> they, that crowd was electric from beginning to end. They were loud. They were into every match. They were cheering. They were screaming at the top of their lungs. I mean, it was loud. They were hyped, and it got me hyped. It, it probably swayed some of my uh, uh, excitement for the matches, maybe even affected uh, some of my rankings. I don't know, but I, I was just so into this premium live event. It was, it was super exciting. It almost felt like I was actually there. It felt like I was there with them, uh, in that arena. It it was, it was nice. I enjoyed it immensely. Let's jump into these matches at backlash France and beginning with the first match of the night, the match that opened up the show and boy, they opened it up with a bang. It was a tag team match. The Bloodline, Soa Sokoa and Tumanga Tonga versus Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. This started off hot and it kept going. It it was nonstop 
from the moment they walked out <laughs> of the curtain to the finishing bell. It was amazing. I enjoyed this. And I thought, you know, going into this premium live event, I thought that this probably would have been the weaker of the five matches. But no, man, this probably you could probably make an argument is one of the better of the night. Um, This match, they started off with a brawl. <clears throat> Excuse me. They started off with a brawl, which prompted Nick Aldis to come out and make it a street fight. And that was like, okay, perfect. This is perfect. They went into the stands, uh, which I didn't like. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of the uh, uh, fighting in the stands thing. I, I, I just don't, for some strange reason, I don't like it. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's all right. Other times, not so much. And this one, not so much. Because Randy Orton got lost. He didn't know where everybody else was at one point. And uh, kind of threw off the, I don't know, just threw off the vibe for a couple of minutes. But uh, once once he caught up with him, uh, the match got back on track. This was an exciting match. Uh, Sol Solo Sokoa. As much as I liked him in NXT, I liked him alongside Roman uh, with the formation of the bloodline and everything. He's taking it to another level after WrestleMania. It has become something more. You know, he, he's really elevated his character in the past couple of weeks as this de facto tribal chief and leader of the bloodline role. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I love Paul Heyman as this character who uh, doesn't know what to do. He's scared to death of Solo Sokoa. He doesn't know uh, to uh, uh, leave him be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, because he was a Roman guy. Uh, Roman was his guy. But he kind of got put into the bloodline by default. And now that Roman is gone... It's like he's stuck there. He's trapped. <laughs> he's trapped in a situation that he doesn't want to be a part of. And I love how that's playing out. As far as the match is concerned, the match was exciting for what it was. It was a street fight. No more, no less. You know, it was furniture. There was tables. There was <laughs> there was chairs. There were garbage can lids. I mean, it was uh, the steps. The I mean, everything, whatever. Whatever they can throw at it, they threw at it. We got RKO's on the uh, announce table. We got uh, brain busters through uh, five folding chairs. You know, it, it was just pure chaos. But at the end, when it appeared that Randy Orton and Kevin Owens was going to get the victory, which I was a little skeptical because I was getting upset with that. Because if this bloodline thing was going to work, um, <laughs> they, they couldn't take the L there. And I was like, oh man, I can't, even though I love Randy, I love Kevin, but I, I didn't want him to win this match. But just when I thought that they were going to go over, they being, uh, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, we get the appearance of a new member of the bloodline, Tanga Lau, who is the brother of Tonga. And so now they're building they're building a, a a real dynasty here, man, with this bloodline. Just when you think the bloodline storyline was over at WrestleMania, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's far from over. And with that interference, that allowed uh, uh, Solo Sikor to get the upper hand on Kevin Owens, hit him with the spike, one, two, three. Bloodline comes out victorious in this match. I really like this match. This was a tone setter for the entire night. This was such a good match. Uh, I mean, is it your standard wrestling match? No. It, it Like I said, it, it was a street fight. It was just a brawl. And that's, in, in this type of, with these participants in this match, this is exactly what it needed to be. That's why I enjoyed it so much. The Bloodline defeats. Kevin Owens and Randy Orton by pinfall, which opened up the premium live event and set the tone for the rest of the night from zero to five stars. This match gets four stars. 
it was very exciting. You're never bored. It was it was action packed throughout the entire match. I think this match was 20 minutes long. And it was amazing that this match never slowed down, never slowed down at no point. It it was it kept you engaged and that's what you wanted from an opening match. Our second match of the night was a triple threat match for the WWE Women's Championship where the champion Bailey defends her title against Naomi and Tiffany Stratton. Once again, <laughs> once again, I looked at this match as being kind of eh, whatever because of Naomi. And as much as I love Naomi, recently Naomi has it's been a little botchy with Naomi since she returned to WWE. I don't know what's going on. And I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm not really, tr I'm not trying to knock her, but it was very, very, uh, it it, well, at least it has been very, very, uh, uh, botchy with Naomi, but, uh, Tiffany Stratton, who I am a huge fan of. I NXT, she's a beast moving on to the main roster. She's a beast. I mean, she has it all. She has the looks completely gorgeous woman. She has the athletic ability. I mean, she was a former gymnast and she just has the charisma, everything that you need, uh, to be a superstar in WWE. She has it that it factor. She has it. And I was excited to see her on the stage. If you don't believe me, go back a couple of months to elimination chain where she competed in that match and man stole the show. She was the MVP of that match, even though she did not come out victorious. I enjoyed her in that match. So how was she going to fare out this go around in this triple threat match? Well, once again, she stole the show. It was Tiff time. It was, <laughs> she stole the show. Uh, and these are two veterans, man. Bailey is probably one of the best female wrestlers working today. If not history, Bailey is amazing in the ring. And Tiffany Stratton outperformed her. Uh, she outperformed Naomi, even though Naomi was a little better in this match. I think some of the spots that were set up were great uh, for uh, Naomi. Everything, everything worked. It wasn't, I didn't see too many botches. I think I saw maybe one or two botches, but not big botches that kind of just slowed the pace of the match. Uh, even though, uh, the pacing was a little off at points, but it weren't because of botches. It was just, I don't know. They were just setting up spots, but overall i liked this match. I thought it was a good match, uh, throughout all three of these young ladies delivered in this match. They all had a moment of shine and, uh, everybody came out looking good. Everybody came out looking shiny and fresh after this match, especially Tiffany Stratton, but it wasn't enough because Bailey retains her WWE Women's Championship by defeating Naomi and Tiffany Stratton in this triple threat match. And from zero to five stars, this match gets three and a half stars. This was probably the weakest match on the card, but it was still an exciting match, which says a lot. This was the weakest three and a half stars. It, it, but you can argue that it was a great match and I wouldn't argue back. I would, I would uh, be in agreement. Like, yeah, it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> but it was, it was the weaker compared to the other four matches on this card. Let's move over to the third match for the world heavyweight championship. Damian priest defending his championship against main event. Jay Uso man. Going back to what we were talking about earlier with the electricity in that crowd. Boy, if you don't think Jay Uso is over, <laughs> he is over, man. That crowd was in, they were eating like it ain't nobody's business. Uh, that, that was uh, a sight to see uh, Jay Uso come through the crowd while everybody was eating in that arena. I guess yeet is a uh, universal 
It don't matter if you're French, American, Samoan. It it don't matter. Uh, <laughs> the yeet is universal. Also, a match that I didn't think was going to go anywhere, but it did. And I got mad throughout this match. And, and for crazy reasons, and I'm going to explain in a couple of seconds. But I, w- I was sitting there watching this match, and I was thinking back to WrestleMania XL. And I was just scratching a hole in my head trying to figure out why that match between Jay Uso and Jimmy Uso did not work. That was the worst match the entire WrestleMania weekend. It, it was horrible. And I couldn't understand it because they did not have any chemistry. And they're twins. How twins don't have chemistry is beyond me. But it was a horrible match. And we get to this with Jay Uso taking on Damian Priest. And Jay Uso looked 20 times better in this match. This was the match that I was expecting at WrestleMania. You know, I, I just, I could not understand it. But he looked good. Damian Priest looked good. Everything clicked. Uh, they had some really good spots in here. Uh, some really, really tight near falls to the point where I actually thought Jay Uso was going to go over. I thought Jay Uso was going to win the title, uh, which would have been devastating because, <laughs> because Damian Priest just won the thing at WrestleMania. And I was on the fence with it because I'm like, yeah, I, I, it would have been nice to see Jay Uso win it. But at the same time, I want to see a run with Damian Priest with this title, especially with the uh, quote-unquote friction that's going on in the Judgment Day, who interfered in his match after Damian Priest told them, don't interfere in the match. You know, I want to do this on my own. And so they're planting the seeds for a, a breakup. I just don't know when and how it's going to happen. I, I'm predicting that uh, Finn Balor is going to end up turning on him and beating him for that title. If not J.D. Madonna, which would be a complete shock. Or or the biggest wild card, you have uh, Dirty Dom come back and win the title. <laughs> beat him for the title. But I think one of the Judgment Day members will beat Damian Priest for that title down the line. I don't know when, but I think that's how it's going to happen. But uh, when it was all said and done, after some exciting near falls in really good spots, Damian Priest retains his World Heavyweight Championship with a little help from Judgment Day, even though he didn't want it. And there was a little friction after the match. But overall, it was ex- it was a good match that had the action and told a story at the, at the end of the day. Out of five stars, Damian Priest defeating Jay Uso by pinfall gets three and a half stars. Really good match. Really, really good match. Surprisingly good. <laughs> Surprisingly good. But it wasn't as big as a surprise as our next match. And it wasn't for the result. The result wasn't a surprise. The entertainment value was a surprise. I wasn't expecting this match to be this exciting, but it was, and it was the tag team match for the WWE women's tag team championships where the champions, the Kabuki warriors, which is Oscar and Kari Sane, defending their championships against Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill. I I was skeptical about this because I'm questioning if they're going to put gold around Jade Cargill's waist this early. Because let's not forget, this is her third match, officially her third match. Actually second, if you want to get technical, uh, if you're not counting the Royal Rumble, which isn't a standard match. But if you want to count that, fine. Third. This is her third match in WWE and we're going to put a belt on her. Now, 
we're not talking about the uh wwe women's championship or nothing like that it, it's just the tag team and i don't want to ah, that came out bad like oh it's just the tag team belts no it i mean that means something but i mean it's not a singles title and so that's different now if, if she would have went out and won the the women's championship then it would have been kind of like wait we, we we're moving way too fast here because she's still green she's still spotty there she she she's learning she's getting better oh she's getting better because she looked good in this match and they she looked good because they're protecting her and kudos to the kabuki warriors to bianca belair who are really ushering her along here uh i think gradually they're building her up to be something special. She's already special. She has it all and she's showing it, but it's just a matter of putting it all together because I haven't seen her sell yet. You know, I haven't seen her in trouble. <laughs> you know, she's been dominating. And so I, I, that's my question. I was like, man, what's going to happen when she's actually in trouble? She's, uh, uh, she doesn't have the upper hand. How is she going to sell? Well, she got in trouble here. I honestly thought that this was going to be a squash. I thought it was going to be a squash match. That's why I wasn't uber excited for this match like that. You know, I wanted to see it. I wanted to see Bianca and Jay go over and all, but you know, as far as being into the match, I wasn't really excited for it, but I was shockingly surprised by the fact this was a good match. The Kabuki warriors actually brought it. They brought it, and at one point throughout the match, I really believed that they were going to retain because they were really bringing it to, uh, especially to Bianca, because they took time to bring in Jay, because you know let the fans build up anticipation, and she did. She, eventually, she got in, but and she was dominant for a little while, but then Kabuki Warriors turned the table on her and actually uh, got some nice. Uh, uh, offense off of her and she was selling pretty decent and I, okay she's getting she's getting there she's getting there this is this is good this is really good uh Kyrie Sane is it me or is this latest run with Kyrie Sane in the WWE not good <laughs> and I'm not enjoying Kyrie Sane like I did when she was the pirate Kyrie Sane in her first run in WWE, uh, this, she, she just doesn't look good. You know, a lot of botches, she botches a lot uh, and, and she botched a lot in this match. One was so bad that the ref had to tell her like, look, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was that bad. I'm like, oh my God, but boy, she took that move from Jade at the end. J that reversal into the jaded was amazing. Uh, I I was sold from that moment. I was all in at that moment. And that led to uh, Bianca Belair hitting the KOD on Oscar on top of Kyrie Zane for them to get the one, two, three and win. Our new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions are Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill black girl magic comes out on top. This, this was a good match. Honestly, I, I was, I was shocked. I was shocked on how good this match was. Uh, but I see in my notes here that I had it wrong. Uh, the bail, the triple threat match for the women's ch title. That wasn't the worst match of the night or the less re received match. It was this one. Uh, this match for the tag team championships where Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill come out victorious out of five stars gets three stars. It was, it was all right. It was decent. This was the worst out of the five matches, but still good. It's <laughs> still good. If I had to sum it up with one word, solid. So that leads us to the main event of the premium live event. And it is for the undisputed WWE championship. Cody Rhodes defending his newly won title against the phenomenal AJ Styles. Let me start off by saying this. 
for everybody on Twitter or uh, these blogs or whatever who feel AJ Styles should wrap it up, he's getting old and all this other stuff, man, go kick rocks. AJ Styles is still probably the best wrestler out there, <laughs> the best in-ring performer bar none. You can have your Kenny Omegas. You can have your wheel off sprays and all that stuff. That All that's fine. AJ Styles still got it. AJ Styles is in his 40s. <laughs> I'm in my 40s. I can't I can't do half of the stuff he do. You can make an argument. He looks better now. He, he, he just looks great in the ring. He, him and Cody worked an amazing match. This was a WrestleMania quality match that they put on. Very exciting. Back and forth, big moves. The pace never slowed down. Uh, straight up. It was just a straight up pro wrestling match. Uh, old school. Loved it. And it, it took me back. <laughs> it took me back. I, I was all in on this match. It had the big fight feel. You know, you had the crowd just going bananas. Each man getting their spots. Each man uh, landing their moves. Each man getting a nil fall. It was just an amazing back and forth. Really, really enjoyed this match. It was everything it was built up to be. I I hope they go at it again. I just, this was This is fight forever. When you hear him talk about fighting for up, this is the match I want to see. Cody Rhodes defeats AJ Styles to retain his undisputed WWE championship. Gets four and a half stars. I, I want to give it five so bad, but it will be a cliche at this point. <laughs> it, it will feel cliche, but it, it was a perfect match. It was amazing amazing this was an amazing pay-per-view uh premium live event uh, one day i'm gonna get that right premium live event it, it was it was fun from beginning to end even the matches that weren't the greatest of qualities were still good matches and i enjoyed this premium live event from france backlash oh man and then after after this premium live event we got the announcement for next year's WrestleMania, it will take place in Las Vegas, Sin City, and I may have to get me a plane ticket. I, I, I might, I might, I might sneak off to Vegas next April. Uh, we we shall see. We shall see. But uh, our next premium live event will take place in a couple of weeks. Quick turnaround, where we will have King and Queen of the Ring which will take place in Saudi Arabia on May the 25th. Let's see how this turns out. I, I used to be a big King of the Ring fan. I, I That used to be one of my favorite pay-per-views. I can say that now because it was a pay-per-view back then. They, I used to be a huge fan of that pay-per-view. I loved the King of the Ring. And when they stopped doing it and turned it into like this tournament on Raw, it just didn't have that same allure. It, it and it's still not gonna have that same uh, uh, feel as it did back in the '80s and the '90s. But at least they got it back. At least it's something, you know, <laughs> rather than doing away with it completely like they did before. But uh, now we have the added caveat of Queen of the Ring as well. So this ought to be a fun, fun event uh the tournament begins this week on raw and smackdown so uh let the games begin but how did you feel about this premium live event backlash from france uh which match was your favorite or did you feel this was just an extended uh smackdown episode i would love to know your thoughts you can email the show kb radio podcast at gmail.com you can also search for this show on all social media platforms. Just search for the KB Radio Network, as well as subscribing to the KB Radio Network channel on YouTube and liking this video if you don't mind. Don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever 
You are currently listening to Faces and Heels here on the KB Radio Network. Everybody, thank you for joining me for this recap of WWE's Backlash France. Until King and Queen of the Ring, which will take place on the 25th, all of you have fun, enjoy Raw, enjoy SmackDown, and I will speak to you on the other side.